Okay, we're back doing some e &M, and here's another example of a non-Gauss's law problem, uh, something where you, know, you have ends or corners or edges, um, things that we don't like in order to do Gauss's law. And uh, the case we'll do here is, is a partial ring of charge. Okay, these, these are a little trickier than a whole ring. And the, the thinking behind this, if we can't use Gauss's laws, we have to stick with fundamentals. So in other words, we, we have to think of this object as it really is, a bunch of extra point charges spread all over it. And point charges are the one thing we know how to do exactly. For example, electric fields, you know, easy enough, uh, electric field is kq over r squared, and for potentials we have kq over r. So let's do the case of electric fields. The fact that those are vectors means they're, they're a little trickier than doing potentials. And if, if you think about this thing, um, you know, we, we can break it into a bunch of little pieces, all these little dqs, and each little charge is shooting out its own little electric field, which, being radial, will come along this, this radius line and point in a direction something like that. Okay, so that, that electric field we can call ZE, and because it's coming from a point charge, we can find out its total strength pretty easily. K times dq all over r squared. Now in this case, we're, we're trying to find the field right at the center of the ring that this thing came from. And so that, that distance from the charge down to the point is, is just the radius of the circle, so it's big r squared. Okay, so that, that's something we have going for us. Okay, but as you can see from the symmetry of this, uh, if we're using this axis that kind of cuts this partial ring in half, you'd have an equal amount of dq, equal amount of charge, on the bottom half, which would be sending the, its own little field up that way. So the y components are all going to cancel out. The overall field is in the x direction. So on our picture, if we can figure out what that angle is right there, we'd have to take our total field and multiply it by the cosine of that angle. Okay. So, if you want the total field pointing in the x direction, we would have to add up all these little fields, which means we have to set up an integral. We have to integrate all these little things. Okay, now it, it looks like it might be easy enough just to solve. Um, there's one issue though. Uh, we run into a problem. If you, if you think about what What's the difference going from point to point to point on this partial ring? Okay, all, all these little dqs we can assume are the same. Uh, the angles are different, which means their components are different. So theta is the variable in this problem. So we, we can't quite figure out this integral yet because we don't know, we don't have a d theta in the integrand. So how on earth are we going to get a d theta in there? In other, you know, we basically have to write the charge in terms of theta. Well, uh, usually what's given in one of these problems is our symbol lambda. It's, it's the, the charge per unit length. You know, so this is basically a curved stick, and so the charge is spread you know, uniformly along this stick, charge per unit length. So if we're given this thing, and if it's a constant, then we we try to have to, we have to try to figure out basically if we solve for dq in terms of lambda. Let's see, lambda times length will give you charge. So we we have to know what the, the little bit of length is okay, dl for one of one of these little chunks of charge. Now we can do this though because basically this dl is is a little bit of arc length. If you think back to Algebra 2 or whenever it was, trigonometry, when, when you did arc length, um, arc length is, whoops, let me find, there we go, is the radius times an angle in radians. Okay, that's, so that would be the, the length of the arc that's being swept out through that angle. Us. We can say that this little bit of arc length is radius times a little bit of angle. 
and that's the key. So what I'm going to do in our integral is I'm going to substitute. For this dq, I'm going to put in dq is our, our um, linear density times arc length, which is our d theta. And we have cosine of the angle. Okay, so now we can start to play with this. Uh, we're going to plot constants. Um, k is a constant, lambda is a constant, one of the big r's drops out. And what we're left with is the integral of cosine d theta. The only thing we need on here are from what angle to what angle. We have to do it from one end of our stick to the other end. Okay, so if we think of our, our maximum angle there, that's theta naught or something like that. We're going from whatever that angle is on the bottom half up to that same angle on the top half, and we can solve this thing. Okay, so I'm not so worried about what that angle is or what the final answer is numerically, but um, let's just make sure we understand the gist of this. If you can't use Gauss's law, any kind of shape, any kind of problem, you got to break it up into point charges. You figure out what's the contribution from a single little charge, dq. You set up, and you know, to find out how big that field is, for example. And then the integral is the sum of all those. Determine what your variable is. And sometimes, in the case of sticks in particular, <laughs> we have to figure out um, and use these ratios to stick in our variables so we can actually evaluate the integral. Okay, but bringing in the point charges, that's the key. So I hope this helps, and until next time, we'll see you later.